Resident Evil is no stranger to iconic boss fights. From fighting a vampire dragon lady to facing off against RE5's version of Homelander, the franchise has always exceeded expectations with the boss fights. With that being said, there are a few more characters of the franchise that we all wish we had a chance to face off against. Rather, they are villains that never get their time to shine or heroes that live long enough to become a monster. Today's list focuses on characters that we wish we had a chance to fight against and one of those iconic Resident Evil boss encounters. So for today's list, I'm diving down into my personal picks for which characters I think we should have had a final showdown against in their respective games. Before that though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content that I bring you guys. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. But with that out of the way, this is Nerd Space Games with my top 7 Resident Evil characters that deserved a boss fight. Let's get it. Number 7, Chief Irons, Resident Evil 2. What's your name? What's your fucking name? Claire! Jerry, you come with me now or say goodbye to Claire. We start with probably the biggest piece of shit of the Resident Evil franchise, Chief Irons. Showing up in the second entry and its remake, Brian Irons is the chief of police in Raccoon City. Unfortunately, despite wearing a badge, this man is pure evil. Throughout both versions of RE2, we learn that Irons has committed a number of crimes, all in the pursuit of money. Just to name a few, he killed a woman that he was entrusted to protect, kept umbrellas and humane experiments a secret from the public no matter the cost, and even sent orphans to Umbrella as test subjects knowing that nobody will go looking for them. The man is truly despicable. So when he died in the most brutal way possible, I don't think a single one of us shed any tears. Well, except those of us that would have loved to do him in ourselves. See, Capcom did a phenomenal job at making us hate this man. But honestly, having such a hated villain, but not making him a boss fight felt like a missed opportunity. Like what if instead of him being killed due to the G-Virus rejecting him, it instead made him an abomination. Something disgusting and fitting of his character. It would have given us one more boss fight and given us the opportunity to face off against this iconic villain in Resident Evil 2. Number 6, Alfred Ashford, Resident Evil Code Veronica. You don't fool me! I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base. Throughout the first half of Code Veronica, Claire Redfield and Steve Burnside are stuck by Alfred Ashford, the current head of the Ashford family while his sister Alexia has been sleeping for the past 15 years. With his trusty rifle in hand, he continues to hunt down our heroes all the way up until his death at the Antarctic base at the hands of Steve Burnside. Unfortunately, despite the presence Alfred had at the beginning half of Resident Evil Code Veronica, his death is kind of lackluster as it pretty much ends with him being shot by Steve and falling to his death. <laughs> Considering that we had the opportunity to face off against both Alexia and her father, Alexander, in some really terrifying boss fights, I can't help but wish that we had the same treatment with Alfred. Instead of the last encounter that we actually got with Alfred, maybe he could have taken the T-Veronica virus immediately as one last effort to end Steve and Claire. More than likely, the T-Veronica would have mutated him in a similar way to what it did to his father, but who knows what kind of terrifying creature would come from it. And to be completely honest, having to face off against him in one last showdown instead of him just being shot and falling to his death would have been a lot more thrilling and satisfying. Number 5, Pierce Nibbins, Resident Evil 6. Chris, we need to stay calm. After what she's done to us, how many of our men are dead because of that bitch? I'm right there with you, Captain. But your personal vendetta isn't going to get us anywhere. If you hadn't been blinded by vengeance, we could have prevented some of those deaths. Shut up. Do you even care about our mission anymore? Shut up! I feel sorry for all the men that died believing in you. <laughs> what happened to the legendary Chris Redfield, huh? What happened to you? It's a good thing Finn's not around to see you this way. I 
out of all the characters on today's list, I feel like this one is probably going to give me the most backlash. But hear me out for a second. Obviously, at the end of Resident Evil 6, Pierce injects himself with the C-Virus in order to save Chris. Because of that, his arm mutates into a BOW-like weapon that can shoot a strong blast of electricity. Now listen, the ending that we got with Chris and Pierce was extremely tragic and I wouldn't even think about changing that ending drastically. However, I do think there's a slight change that could have made the moment a little more intense and even added a multiple ending scenario to Chris's campaign. First, I want to bring up another game that some of you may not have heard of. It's called A Way Out. I'm not going to dive too much into spoiler territory for that game, but what I will say is that the gameplay mechanics in that game are pretty awesome. In that game, it's a two-player experience where both characters have to work together to complete the game. At some point in the game, each character might have a different goal that they are trying to complete, so you find yourself against your partner at some point. That's what I would have loved to see from the ending sequence of Chris's campaign. Perhaps near the escape pod, Pierce loses control and attacks Chris. The two have to face off against each other with each player controlling their own character. This will give the game two separate endings, one in which Chris wins the fight and one if Pierce wins the fight. If Chris wins, you get the original ending that we saw in the game. However, if Pierce wins, maybe we get a bad ending where Pierce kills Chris and gives in fully to becoming a BOW. I know, I know, it's a lot, but imagine if this is what we actually got in RE6. Number 4, Steve Burnside, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Relax, beautiful. I said I was sorry. My name's Steve. I was a prisoner on this island. And we're back with Code Veronica, and full disclosure, it won't be the last time we take a look at this game either. Anyway, once again, we're looking at yet another hero who became a monster, Steve Burnside. Only in Steve's case, becoming a monster wasn't even a choice. Whereas Pierce chose to become one to save Chris, Steve unfortunately was captured by Alexia and given the T-Veronica virus. Before we move any farther though, I do need to address the elephant in the room. Yes, I know technically we got a boss fight with Steve. But could we actually call that a fight? I mean, it was literally just running and healing for about 10 seconds. That's it. Considering that Steve becomes the Incredible Hulk, but with a massive weapon, it was kind of disappointing that we didn't get the opportunity to actually fight him. You can have Claire running across the room while blasting him and dodging him until he's defeated. And you don't even really have to take away his self-sacrifice scene. Instead of him dying after you defeat him in the boss fight, there could be a scene where he grabs Claire and then he reverts back and sacrifices himself for her just like he did in the actual game. Only this time we get one iconic boss fight against Hulk Steve. Number 3, Albert Wesker, Resident Evil Code Veronica. <laughs> you have no idea how much I hate you. You destroyed my plans, so now I've sold my soul to a new organization. Now, die. <laughs> The final entry for Code Veronica is none other than Albert Wesker. Listen, I know we get to fight Albert eventually in Resident Evil 5, but considering that Wesker is a major part of Code Veronica, it's kind of weird that we never got to face him in that game. I'm not saying we needed to face mutated Volcano Wesker, but we should have at least got something. The first thing that comes to mind is actually the fight from Lost Nightmares. In that fight, Chris and Jill team up against Superhuman Wesker. We should have seen something similar to that at the end of Code Veronica, but with Chris and Claire instead. Doing this would have given us two awesome moments. One, we get a team up moment with Claire and Chris. And two, we get to actually do that fight against Wesker instead of just watching a long clip of Wesker kicking Chris's ass, which wasn't all that bad, but still. Even if the Claire and Chris team up was too much for the technology at the time, just doing something small with Chris would have been fine. Overall, having Code Veronica skip out on a Wesker fight completely after setting him up throughout the entire game just felt like a massive tease. But hey, maybe the remake can fix that for us, right? Number 2, Nikolai, Resident Evil 3. Why'd you do it? <sighs> There's a price tag for everything, even letting the world burn. 
Gotta say, Nikolai is an asshole, but he's an asshole that we all love to hate. Throughout the events of Resident Evil 3, Nikolai, unlike a different badass villain that we all know and love, doesn't exactly try to hide his villain-like tendencies. From shooting his own squad mate without hesitation to trying to have Jill killed by Nemesis multiple times, Nikolai is just all in it for himself. After causing the death of a very likable Mikhail, almost killing Carlos, and the amount of times he pisses you off, you would think that you'll eventually get the opportunity to kill the man once he finally becomes a monster. Unfortunately, that time never comes. In the remake, Nikolai is left alive and injured on a rooftop moments before Raccoon City is blown up. In the original game, you can kill Nikolai, but there is also a possibility he escapes Raccoon City on his own. Regardless, neither version of Resident Evil 3 provides a fulfilling boss fight against Nikolai considering all of the pain he's caused you throughout the game. For that reason, he makes it all the way up to number 2 as he's one of the most iconic villains of the franchise that we never get to fight. Like imagine if he is forced to take the G-Virus in order to protect himself against Jill or Carlos. Actually, I feel like a boss fight against Carlos would have been perfect since the man betrayed Carlos' entire team. But instead, we're left to just be happy with seeing him left for dead on a rooftop at the end of Resident Evil 3 Remake? No, I don't think so, Capcom. Number 1. Oswell E. Spencer Any game I was to become a god. <laughs> Creating a new world with an advanced race of human beings. Considering that Oswald E. Spencer is probably the most influential villain of the franchise, it's a damn shame that we never got to face off against him in any of the Resident Evil titles. I mean, think about it. This guy created Umbrella, the pharmaceutical company that is responsible for causing the outbreaks in the Arclay Mountains and Raccoon City. You know, the events of the first four games, if you include RE0. On top of that, he's responsible for creating Wesker. He's had ties to just about every villain of the franchise, including Mother Miranda. Yet, we never get to face off against him. I mean, sure, by the time Resident Evil 5 comes around, he can barely stand, but come on. Considering all the experiments he's been a part of throughout the franchise, you can't tell me that he couldn't have found something that would have prolonged his life and made him a big bad in one of the games. Regardless, I don't think it's fair to completely count him out, considering that I still have a crazy insane theory that he might still be alive and well out there. Overall, Oswald E. Spencer is the man behind every villain's story of the franchise, so he's easily the most deserving of a boss fight over any other character of the franchise. Since we didn't get it in RE5, as that probably would have made the most sense, my money is now on RE9. But we'll see, won't we? But that does it for today's episode of Nerd Space Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my number one pick. Do you think that Oswald E. Spencer is the most deserving of a boss fight or is there a different character of the franchise that deserves their own boss fight more? Let me know down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content that I bring you guys. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. But thanks for watching and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.